Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So welcome, everyone. I apologize for the delay. I have a very specific writer with Intertech, and there were no M&Ms sitting on my desk when I came in, so that had to be resolved. It's been resolved, and now we can start the uh, seminar. So welcome. Today we're going to be talking about jQuery. I know this is Understanding jQuery, and really this is going to be uh, an introduction. If you've never had any experience with jQuery, you're in the right place. All right, so a little bit about myself. My name is Jason Shapiro. You'll see my email address written right here. If you could jot that down, that would be great. My email address is jshapiro at intertech.com. If you have any questions on the material that we're covering or any other classes that we teach here at Intertech, please feel free to um, give me a shout through the email. We also have a Twitter account, and I would encourage everyone to uh, follow our Twitter account. We announce things such as this free uh, seminar. That's at Intertech Inc. There's the I-N-C at the end of our Twitter account. You can also get there by going to twitter.intertech.com. Um, I'll also give you some other additional resources at the end of this presentation, such as our uh, LinkedIn page and our Facebook page and whatnot. So I have a little over 15 years of professional software development and architecture experience, most recently uh, working on business intelligence applications. I previously worked on uh, web applications as well, portal applications. Uh, completed a Master of Science in Software Engineering, and in the early part of 2000 completed some of the SUN certifications, which I guess would be a Oracle certification now. So enough about me. Let's jump right into the material. So here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to start right at the beginning. We're going to talk about what is jQuery. Why should you care about jQuery? Once we've convinced you that you should know and love jQuery, we'll talk about how you set up jQuery, how you put that inside of your web application. And then we'll start getting into the syntax. We'll look at the jQuery identifier, look at a um, uh, syntax of method chaining that they provide. And once we have a clear understanding of the basic jQuery syntax, we'll take a look at some of the different um, you know, areas of technology that we typically add to our uh, web applications. So we'll look at, for example, selecting elements. That's what we really spend a lot of our time doing. We, we'll have an uh, input text box on a web page, and we need to get the value of what someone's typed in there. We need to send on to uh, the server to get some more information. Other times, we take placeholders, such as div tags or span tags, and we want to fill in new XHTML to render a brand new page. So we do a lot of selecting elements, and jQuery has really done an amazing job at making that easy. So we'll take a look at the jQuery selecting elements section. We'll take a brief look at some Ajax utilities. After that, we'll take a look at uh, DOM creation and manipulation, so DOM being the document object model, event handling, and then the stuff that people typically expect when they're uh, downloading a JavaScript framework, and those are the styles, the effects, the widgets that you can add onto your web page. So let's take a brief look at the uh, styles, the effects, and we'll look at the main UI library uh, that's provided by jQuery for adding widgets. At the end of the presentation, I'll give you a few resources so that you can continue your education in jQuery. And we'll have a little bit of time to take a few questions and answers. Again, um, if we uh, you have a question that wasn't answered, um, I really encourage you to send me an email. So if there were any topics uh, that I mentioned in this agenda that you're not familiar with, maybe you're familiar with some of them and not all of them, well, that's okay. Again, I'm going to really encourage that you stick around for the entire presentation. Um, it's a bit like a punk rock song. You know, if you don't like one, there's a new one coming up pretty quickly. So we've got a lot of topics that we're going to cover here with jQuery. Um, however, if you would like to get some more um, in-depth experience uh, with some of the topics we're covering, such as advanced JavaScript and the DOM API and whatnot, I'm going to encourage you to check Check out our complete Ajax for Java class. Um, this has just been recently completely revamped, and in fact, this uh, jQuery seminar is based on a chapter from that class. Um, if you have any questions about that class, again, please send me an email. Happy to talk about that. And we also offer a complete Ajax for .NET course if you're not coming from the Java background. Um, the outline for that class is available at the Intertech website, intertech.com. 
All right, so let's jump into it. What is jQuery? Why should you care? Now, I want you to take a look at the logo that you see here, jQuery, write less, do more. That's really going to be uh, the theme of today's presentation. In fact, I'm probably going to say write less, do more over and over and over again, because that's what jQuery is about. Uh, but jQuery is not a new programming language. You're not going to have functionality added to your web pages that you weren't able to do with, say, traditional JavaScript and CSS and XHTML. This is all just about taking what we do and making it simpler. Let's uh, reduce the amount of code that we want to write. So jQuery is about four years old. It was released in 2006. Uh, it is an open source JavaScript framework, and it does have a large number of widgets and third-party plugins. Again, the, the motto, write less, do more, that's really what jQuery is about. Its framework is free. Uh, it's licensed under the MIT new general public license, version 2. And in terms of the browsers it supports, it supports a whole mess of browsers. Firefox do not own Grader. Uh, IE6 and Grader, Safari 3 and Grader, Opera 9 and Grader, and Chrome 1 and Grader. So, why are we talking about jQuery? Why aren't we talking about some other framework today? Well, really, at this point, jQuery is probably arguably uh, the most popular JavaScript framework available. Now, it's a little bit hard to justify that, um, but there are a lot of stats websites out there um, that are echoing this sentiment. In fact, one that I recently visited uh, this month, I have a URL down there, trends.buildwith.com slash JavaScript, listed jQuery as the most detected JavaScript library in use on the web, and it was by a wide margin. So that's why we're talking about jQuery. Uh, jQuery was created by John Resig, and if you're interested in his development team and some of the other projects that they're working on, or maybe you want to check out their blogs or Twitter accounts, you can find out a whole bunch of information on them over at jQuery.org slash team. So that's what jQuery is. Now let's uh, talk about setting everything up. What do we do here to set things up? For the setup, you are going to go to the jQuery website, jQuery.com, and you'll notice a link that says grab the latest version, and they give you two different options, a production option and a development option. So the production version is really uh, just the smallest file possible. It's They're both the production and the development version of the exact same API. There's no functionality difference. The only difference is that if you look at the code, the production version is going to have all the comments removed. It's going to have very small identifiers. All the white space has been compressed. Um, so the, the goal of the production version is simply to have as small of a download as possible. Whereas the development version is a little bit more human readable. So I've got a screenshot right here where you can see Slight, small example of what that might look like. You'll notice it's just formatted a little easier to read. There are comments. The identifiers uh, are human readable. Uh, and, and it's really if you want to kind of know what's going on underneath the covers. Now, of course, just as a general best practice when you're using someone else's library, you may not want to rely on what's going on under the covers. Uh, you know, the only things we're really guaranteed from any of these libraries that we're using, and barely guaranteed at that, unfortunately, is, is the interface that they're providing. What methods do they tell us that we can call? Um, what parameters should we be passing in? And what do they say they're going to return? If we start to find little tricks and hooks inside of the code itself, uh, we may find ourselves in trouble by the time the next update comes out. So which one should you use? Um, you know, the name suggests exactly what you should use. If you're going to be doing development, feel free to uh, look at the development version. Otherwise, just download the small one, which is the production version. Once you've downloaded this, and by the way, what you're downloading is simply a JavaScript file. That's all it is. That's your whole framework. Uh, so what do you do once you have a JavaScript file? You need to add it to your web content. And the way that we do that is simply by adding a script tag. So you see here an example of an HTML page, and I have the script tag where I've added jQuery-1.4.2 min.js. That happens to be the version and the name of the file I downloaded, and that's it. Now you're ready to use jQuery. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.